So are you thinking about moving away from San Jose, leaving the Silicon Valley area, and is Colorado Springs on your short list? Well, today we are going to talk to a top agent there who's going to give us the inside scoop on the housing and really what the lifestyle is like there. So stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in Silicon Valley. I specialize in selling houses. And unfortunately right now I have a lot of clients that are moving out of the area. I have one client in particular who is moving to Colorado Springs. We're selling his house in San Jose and he's gonna be making a new life in Colorado Springs. So I thought what a great opportunity to talk to Mark, a realtor there who specializes in the housing and the lifestyle and everything. So he's gonna get give us some great information. And as always, I will break down the cost of living between say San Jose and Colorado Springs and the weather. That slide will be at the end. And you can always access that on my website for cost of living comparisons for a lot of cities that I've been interviewing agents from. Oh, and before we do, we do me a favor. We subscribe to my channel. Gosh, it really helps me. And if you like anything we have to say at the end, give us a thumbs up for this video. Okay, here we go. Here we are with Mark Hubert. Thank you so much for joining us from Colorado Springs. How's it going, Mark? <laughs> Oh, it's going awesome, Annie. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, it looks like you have a sunny day there, unless you have a big bright light on you. How's the weather today? As per usual, Colorado Springs came through with a flawless sunny day. We have 330 days of sunshine here. So, wow. yeah, uh, wow. today is really no exception at all. This is what we get the majority of the time. Love it. Love it. So tell us a little bit about you. How long have you lived there and all that? Yeah, so I have, uh, my wife and I moved out here in 2017 with our oldest son, 2017. We've been out here for 17 years. Oh. We moved in 2003 <laughs> and we've been out here 17 years. My brother's construction business is what brought us out here originally. Of course, the boom in the early 2000s for construction was real uh, and we got after it. And of course, 2008 hit and um, we had to sell the company. Uh, so I found myself working in homeowners association management, which I know what you're thinking, Annie, that sounds incredible. Um, it's just as much fun as it sounds, yeah, that's <laughs> rough. Um, but no, I, that was what I did for the uh, nine years prior to getting my uh, real estate license in 2016, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, it has ended up serving me very, very Oh my gosh. Well. I'm thinking what a great background construction and HOA. I mean, seriously, you've learned a ton. It really, really helps being well versed when you've got buyers coming in and they want to know because associations get a bad rap, you know, is somebody going to come knock on my door because a blade of grass is one inch higher than it's right. supposed to be. So, uh, no, it's, it's good to have that background. And actually that brings up a good point. Is there a lot of, um, kind of like plan communities in Colorado Springs that do have HOA associations? Yeah, yeah no, awesome question. So that's, um, one of the biggest growing industries we have is master plan communities. So, uh, you know, we've been talking about the lifestyle. People move to Colorado Springs for a lifestyle. And because again, the sunshine we mentioned earlier, <laughs> it's sunny all the time. So people can get outside. They want the hiking, they want the biking, they want the trails, they want that outdoor life. So uh, master plan communities, having those trail systems inside the communities, having wow. all the parks, all the opportunities for people to go outside. That's a really big draw right now. So almost all of our newer communities are master plans to some degree. It's interesting. I've lived in both, as I'm sure a lot of people have, but yeah. it, it is really nice when you do live in a well thought out master plan community. And if the HOA isn't yeah. too stringent, because really life can't be easier sometimes when they have it all thought out, don't right. you know? Well, and what I tell people all the time, you know, Annie, is it's like what I love about associations is they maintain their value better than being in in a community that's not in an association. That's a good point. Yeah. That, that's a huge, huge draw, you know? So yes, you have the master plan community, but as stringent as associations are, you can guarantee that your neighbor isn't going to park his boat in his driveway for any period of time. And he's not going to paint his house hot pink without some sort of repercussion, right? So um, I, I really, I, I love the fact that associations serve a purpose. And it just so happens that builders, developers have, um, 
caught on to the master plan community. So the gym and the pool oh. and the trails and everything else, it's really taken off. That's really good to know. So, um, and what are we talking about housing? I'm sure there's a gamut, a huge gamut, but what is kind of your average kind of median so, price? So um, as of the end of September, <laughs> uh, average sales price for a single family home was 431. Nice. 431,000 and then a townhome condo is uh, 295. Okay. Let's just say we've got, you know, um, a family leaving California, selling their, you know, three bedroom, two bath, 1500 right. square feet house for, you know, one, three, 1.3 million. And <laughs> they want to go there and they're probably going to get a little bit more for their money. So let's say a four bedroom, two and a half bath, yeah. maybe 2,500 square feet. What is that going to you know, yeah, really like five that is going to land and... right there at that fourth. And, and again, it depends on the uh, on the part of town too. And you know, we when we talk about lot size, when we talk about okay. location, things like that. So you can get up to a three acre lot, wow. um, trees and everything else. Now, obviously, there's going to be a premium with that, and you're going to end up with a custom home more than likely, right? right and so right. the price point's going to be well above one million dollars okay. but the average sales price so let's go back to the master community right the master plan community uh, in most of the master plan communities that we have here five to five hundred and fifty is going to get you in that four three two normally a four three three oh, wow. um, with the master plan community feel so think community center and all that good stuff so uh, vastly different than, than that 1.3 we have learned from our friends who have come from california that the dollar goes a lot farther here, um, especially when we talk about property taxes. Um, I realize that it's not your part of California, but we do an example being Temecula. We have some friends coming from Temecula. They close in two and a half weeks if memory serves. Um, you're talking $11,000 in property taxes in the house that they're in. Right. Well, the house that they're buying, uh, property taxes are $3,000. That's significant. That's yeah, it makes a huge. So when you factor in not only property values and then um, the taxes, the property taxes on top of historically low interest rates, um, we're a really desirable landing spot for oh, a yeah. lot of places. So I do a lot with people retiring. And so they're mm -hmm. looking for maybe an active adult community. Do you have anything like that? Some 55 and older planned communities? We do. Those are actually gaining a lot of traction here in Colorado Springs uh, simply because, like I said, we're mild in regards to the weather. It's what folks are looking for. Um, and it also gives them the opportunity to remain active. So um, most of the master plan communities we were talking about earlier are now including that 55 and over where uh, the exterior maintenance of the home or the landscaping or something like that is taken care of as part of the association. So those 55 and older are really gaining traction. Prior to the 55 plus communities coming online, uh, what we saw was patio homes, a lot of patio homes. So it's that same vibe um, as far as lower maintenance on right. the exterior of the home and landscaping and snow removal in the event that we get snow. But talking about the weather, so what's the snow like there? Is it like Denver? Or how you know, it, 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 Annie, it's crazy because people were like, so we need to worry about shoveling snow, right? Okay. You really don't. Oh, really? So we're at six and a half thousand feet above sea level. Okay. And when you have sun 330 days out of the year, uh, the snow melts quickly if we get it. So an inch or less might be around for a day. It will not really? be around long. Most of our snow actually hits in March and April in the springtime. Oh, uh, interesting. An example be, I play golf a lot in January. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's it's, crazy. It's gorgeous. And, and I tell people all the time, normally I'm putting my Christmas lights up uh, in a short sleeve shirt and jeans. It's, wow, it's really mild, so snow that. is not a huge deal, but here's a pro tip for those of you who are thinking about coming to Colorado Springs. If you have a south-facing driveway, the sun hits it all day long and you don't have to shovel as much as the north-facing driveway. Oh my gosh, look at that tip. That is someone <laughs> that lives there and knows about exactly. it. Oh, I love now, granted, it. that doesn't impact the home value at all, so don't think like that. But yeah, there's your pro tip from Colorado tip. Springs. So, okay, what if someone wanted to go skiing? Can they go skiing close by or is that really driving to Vail and Aspen and all that? Yeah, so Breckenridge is probably the closest resort town that we have. 
uh, think hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending upon weather and traffic. Yeah, Vail, Aspen, uh, obviously a little bit longer. Uh, Breckenridge is, is closest at an hour and a half to two hours. And then Vail, Aspen, uh, Monarch, uh, Loveland, you could still get, um, I think two and a half, three hours. It will get you to a ski town. So you can easily get there Friday night, ski until Sunday and make it back. And you've already mentioned sort of the biking and hiking lifestyle that most yeah. people associate that area with. We're just a really big outdoors community. If you were to go go on your four wheeler, uh, those those trail systems are really really close by okay. here to Colorado Springs, right in the foothills. Yeah, like if someone wanted to go to like a concert, I mean I know COVID, no one's going to concerts, oh. but do they come in with music and uh, you know events like that too? I am so glad you asked. Red Rocks Amphitheater. Oh, it is just to the west of Denver in Morrison, Colorado. It's nestled in the foothills. But if you look up Red Rocks Amphitheater, that's actually one of the places where bands and performers want to play. It's oh, yeah. on their bucket list. Yeah. So it's an outdoor amphitheater surrounded by rocks. So the sound is just awesome. Uh, and, and we love it. Is that How far is that for, for you? Uh, I think an hour and okay. 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so do most people fly into Colorado Springs too. I forgot to ask that, or is it Denver? Most people come into Denver. Uh, that's going to be a little less expensive, and if we're only an hour and twenty minute drive okay. south, so okay. it's super super convenient. But Southwest just last week announced that they're going to start flights out of Colorado Springs, yeah. and they've already got five routes nonstop that they're ready to go. So if you're coming out of Colorado Springs, um, L.A., Phoenix, Vegas, Chicago. There's a ton of straight flights to cities okay. like that out of Colorado Springs, but nine times out of 10, we're, we're coming out of Denver for our flights. Okay, so that's something to consider. People, you know, a lot of people can work from home, but if they need to go back, you know, once a month and they need to fly out of Denver to California, they might yeah, be going and that's, to- that's been a big draw. Back to that uh, couple that we were talking about from Temecula. Oh, yeah. They actually landed in uh, Castle Rock, which is between Colorado Springs yeah. and Denver. They didn't want to quite live in Denver. Uh, Martin was like, you know, I don't know if I want to drive an hour and a half. How about just 30 minutes to the airport? And I'm like, great, go to Castle Rock. Yeah. So we we found a house for them in Castle Rock. Oh, fantastic. So. so you can go that area. So that's definitely something, a good option. For yeah, on. absolutely. Yep. Um, okay, and then I went to the Air Force Academy, I know, to watch uh, my daughter play hockey when she was growing up. So I love that. And I just thought that was such a cool aspect of the community to have the academy right there. Yeah, we're a, a super heavily military populated town. Okay. Um, so the Air Force Academy, Peterson Air Force Base, Shriver Air Force Base, Fort Carson, uh, Cheyenne Mountain NORAD. Uh, we have a lot of military installations, so when we talk about uh, retirement, we actually see a lot of folks cycle through in the military, come here, and they're like, oh yeah, when I'm done oh. in the service, I want to retire here. Oh, I love that. So they'll circle back around just because it's it's gorgeous here. But yeah, the academy's great. The outdoor uh, hockey games at the Air Force uh, football arena has been pretty cool. Uh, yeah. The military presence is, is substantial here for sure, and the Air Force Academy is a huge part of that. And what about like restaurants and all that? I'm assuming it's you guys have lots of all of that. <laughs> well, if you're in California and you're hearing this, we're getting our first In and Out burger here in Colorado Springs. Oh there you gosh, go. We're coming. <laughs> if, you, if you needed another reason to come to Colorado Springs, I'm in. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, yeah, we're getting our first one. It's on the far north end, uh, but we are scheduled for a second one. Uh, sometime next year. They're both set to open next year. Outside of In-N-Out, we actually do a lot of mom and pop shops. We, uh, we're big into supporting local. Uh, the community is really, really tight net like that. And because we're a landing, a landing spot for a lot of different ethnicities and things like that, we have a really wide variety of mom and pop owned restaurants, which is great. And uh, that's that's fun. Out here. yeah. Breweries. Breweries have caught on quite a bit. So there's a lot of breweries opening up, but they don't want to serve food, which is okay because food trucks don't want to buy their liquor license. So food trucks are parking in the parking lot, right, of oh, the exactly. breweries. So you can get a beer, you can get food, and it's all exactly. at once. Exactly. They've started doing that a little bit here too. And it's so fun. These food trucks are ridiculous. They're so neat. Yeah. And 
all different kinds of food, like you said. Oh my gosh, it just seems like there's so much to explore there. And I'm so happy to hear how sunny it is because that's always a big plus for Californians. They're always like, the weather's so great here, but if that sounds like the same amount of sun as we get. Yeah, it's a huge misconception, Annie. That, oh, it snows there. Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. At elevation on the western slope, oh my gosh. Yeah, they're going to get snow on a regular basis because you got to go skiing, right? right? But down here, right along the foothills uh, on the front range of Colorado Springs, uh, we it's not as precipitous as a lot of people give us a hard time for. It. I love it. Yeah. This has been a wealth of information. I, <laughs> I'm going to have all your contacts below so people can contact Mark. You're thinking about... You know, outside of Denver, it sounds like you'll go as close as, you know, yep. 40 minutes or so outside of Denver, all the way to Colorado Springs. Yep. We're Castle Rock all the way down to Colorado Springs. So uh, Monument, Falcon, Peyton, uh, even Woodland Park and Divide as you go up into the hills. Okay. Um, we've got a pretty wide um, radius that we can help you buy or sell. Uh, yeah. And, and if you just have questions, um, Hey, hey, Mark, I'm thinking about it, but can you give me a, a little more information on this specific thing? Right. Yeah, feel free to reach out. We're happy to help any way that we can. Love it. Thank you, Mark. I so appreciate it. I've learned a lot, so I hope other viewers <laughs> are too. So thank you so much, and hopefully we'll share some clients soon. <laughs> that would be awesome. Thanks for having me, Annie. Okay, thanks. Here's a little breakdown of some of the cost comparisons and the weather. Wow, as always, I just learned a ton about Colorado Springs. I hope you learned some things too. And again, all Mark's contact is below. Go to my website to get the stats about the cost of living comparison, and that's free. And I also have the link to the seven tips for a quick, fast sale. If you need to get your house ready for sale here, don't hesitate to reach out. The value of your house, my free link is below as well. So until next time, have a great one.